I just want to, I just sort of want to talk and just share what's on my heart. I, it's been a challenging year. Uh, I don't know how many of you know us or keep up with us, but it's been quite a year. And through it all, the faithfulness of Papa is just incredible. It's been incredible. And the thing that helps me process life is understanding, living in, discovering the awareness of his presence and accessing the presence of God in a tangible way. Where he encounters me, maybe not in great fire, I don't know what that's happened, but he encounter, encounters me where I need him to. And honestly, without that, I have no life. Well, brother, you got the word. Yeah, I do. But at least he breathes on it. It's just nothing. And so I just want to share some of some of that. Uh, you're saying that song, one of my favorite songs you started off with. There is a real, I, I love that song. It goes right along with uh, one of my favorite verses in Psalm 46 it said there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God the dwelling place of our God there is a river whose streams make glad not sad glad well how does that work we're going to figure that out because without this river flowing we do not have the streams that make us glad. And when I speak of glad, I mean the stream that has the answer for everything in our life, like Andre, they were saying about the giant killer. If we don't understand this stream, this river, if we don't understand how to access that, then we fight on our own. I've done that. It's not fun. So I know the difference. And you know, it's always been Papa's heart for his presence to be a part of our life. Now when I talk about his presence, I don't mean some ethereal thing or some Sunday school story. I'm talking about a tangible experience of him. Because he's alive. You got somebody living inside of you, you should know it. Seriously. I mean, when Sherry was pregnant with our kids, she knew it. They would roll, they would kick, you knew. She knew. It's the same, really, it's the same with God's presence. He's alive. And we should know that. How do we know that? How do we access it? How do we, how do we become aware of this? You know, in the garden, we know the Father was with Adam and Eve. They loved his presence, right? And see, that was the original intent of creation. The original intent of God's creation was that he would dwell with man, that he would be with him. That was his heart. And we know the story of what happened. But he did not give up on his presence, him dwelling with his people. And, you know, without going into detail, there was, uh, you remember the encounter of the presence of God that Moses had with a fiery burning bush. The presence. And then we go on to where Moses builds the tabernacle. And what's in there? The ark. What is the ark? The presence of God dwells, right? What's interesting about that model is the works to get to the presence in the Old Covenant. Then we know after that Again, without the details, we know David pitched a tent. The tent of David. And when they take, took the Ark of the Covenant back, they didn't take it back to Moses' tabernacle. They brought it to David's. And suddenly, there was access. Because in the Moses' tabernacle, like I said, you had to work your way in there. And David's tent was really a, a tiny shadow of what the Father's always wanted, his presence in us and with us. 
And then we speed ahead. Here comes Jesus. Wow. The very embodiment of the presence of the Father. And we know the life of Jesus. I mean, it's just incredible. And he was baptized. This is the Holy Spirit came upon him. I often wonder why they said, like a dove. I mean, what does that look like? They saw the Holy Spirit. It wasn't a bird. But they saw it and they said, wow, it's like a dove. Only thing I can think of maybe was gentle. It just landed on him. But it empowered him. If from that point on, signs of water, I mean, just like unstoppable. And when, when Jesus was empowered with this fresh presence of his Father, he began to do incredible things. Now, what's interesting in the Old Covenant, and with the Tabernacle of Moses, and the Ark of the Covenant, etc., etc., and the presence of God, and the power of God, not all the time, but so often, they would call on God and His presence would come and defeat an earthly army and defeat an earthly assault. Not all the time. And then Jesus comes on the scene. He's in power with the presence of the Father. And He comes on the scene and He begins to assault and defeat the spiritual army. And the byproduct of that is people were healed. Eyes were opened. Hearts were mended. Because remember, we don't fight against flesh and blood like they were in the old covenant father. God, send down your, you know, and he'd wipe them out. Jesus came with a different heart, with a heart empowered by the presence, a different view, different expectation. And so when he came with the presence of God, he would see into the heart of the people. And from that point, he knew what to do. And literally, it's like the enemy came, captured people in sickness and being crippled, all sorts of stuff. And he came and he rescued them out of the enemy's camp by healing them. And the healing power was just an expression of Papa's heart. That's all it was. Because God loves us so much. The Father loves us so much that when someone's healed, someone's heart is mended, whatever, it's an expression of how much Papa loves you. So Jesus came doing this. But in doing that, he was also dismantling the work of the enemy behind the scenes. You know, it says in Acts that Jesus came about doing all good. Healing, doing good. So, he came filled with the presence. And we know the story. He was crucified, resurrected, and walked among the people. Incredible things happened. And I love what John said. You know, the libraries of the world cannot contain everything Jesus has done. Think about that. That just tells us that he did so much more than what's written. Incredible. And before he is uh, uh, taken up, what does he tell everybody? Go wait. Go wait to Jerusalem until you receive power. We know this story. So they go, they gather they worship, they pray, and then we suddenly, here comes that power. Like a mighty rushing wind. And we know the power came, the presence came. It's really what it was. It was God's presence himself. And everybody's life was changed from that point on. Why? Because God, once again, Dwell with man like you dwell with Adam and Eve. The original intent. It's always been there. But now, Jesus said, out of your innermost being will flow rivers of living water. In other words, the presence of God that you cannot contain. But do we contain it more than we should? 
And I love the fact Jesus said, remember he's talking to Peter, he said, upon this rock, I'll build my church, right? I think that the church really, to be built the way Jesus wanted it built can only be built by Jesus. So you say, okay, well, what's, what, what? All right, just think for a minute, what's the whole point of church? We know it's to advance the kingdom of God, right? And how did Jesus advance the kingdom? Anybody? He did incredible miracles. He wrecked havoc on the devil. When the enemy thought he had somebody, Jesus came along. Nope, don't think so. So Jesus displayed the heart of the Father through great miracles and signs and encounters. And again, it's just the heart of the Father being demonstrated. That's what it is. And he said, I will build my church. And he is the one. If you want, if we want our church built like Jesus wants his church built like, we have to let Jesus build it. It's like evangelism. You know, there's a lot of wonderful evangelism classes, et cetera, et cetera. But if you really want to evangelize, then you have to evangelize using the Jesus method. If you, that's my opinion. And the Jesus method was, oh my goodness. Because remember, Jesus was always after the heart. Woman Samaria at the well, remember this? He saw into her heart. Now, how do we know that? Well, as they were talking, and the subject come up about one of she had five husbands, the one she's living with now is not her husband. Did you notice what Jesus did not say? He was after her heart. He wasn't there to condemn her. Notice what he did not say. And then he loved her through expression, through what he, he loved her. He told her about the father and we know the story what happened she got encountered how do we know that because she got empowered to go into the city and tell the men what happened and you don't do that women don't go up to men in that culture and just walk up to them and talk to them like that you just didn't do that but she did why she had been encountered by jesus something transpired and the men got excited they went up to see <clears throat> after a while they said wow Oh, my goodness. We believe now because of what we've seen. And this is Samaria, right? And look look what experiencing the presence of God and encountering Jesus in a little town will do. Because all these people encountered him. It wasn't a mind thing. It wasn't a teaching thing. It wasn't a class. It was a spiritual encounter, spirit to spirit. It wasn't intellectual. So what happened? They were all excited in Samaria. Look at this fruit. And this is the fruit of when Jesus encounters somebody. In Acts 8, it says, Philip goes down to Samaria. What does he do? Simply begins to tell people about Jesus. And then suddenly, people started getting healed. Demons started be, getting to be cast out. All this happened, and I love the verse that says, and there was great rejoicing in the city. Revival broke out. Why? Because earlier there had been the seed planted, which was the encounter of the presence of God in those people. And when God encounters you, and when the presence of God consumes you, you are not the same. The thing you love the most is the thing you talk about the most. And when Jesus does that with us, that's what we want to talk about. And this is what happened. And, you know, that's the model, in my opinion. That's the model for revival. That's the model for evangelism. It's all centered around encountering the presence and the power of the Father's great love for us through demonstrations of miracles and healing and mending of hearts. Yes. So someone would come up, Jesus, you know, you know, I love it. It's like, 
he never pre-qualified people when he prayed for them. He just loved them. And it's like, you're blind? Okay, come here. Oh, wait a minute. No. Lazarus is not dead. He's just sleeping. Wow, what perspective did he have? How did he see that's so different from the way we see? He was aware of what was in him. He knew. Oh, crippled? Okay, get up. And, and, and what happens when that happens to people? Look, with Peter, look at Acts. The guy that was lame got up, began to walk, and the, the Pharisees told him, you know, don't say anything. But what did he do? The one you're in love with the most is the one you talk about the most. It's so easy to bring people to Jesus when you allow Jesus to love them, especially through power. And it may be a mending of the heart. Who knows? It's so easy to bring people to Jesus like that. We had, I remember uh, in our church years ago, we had a lady walk in, a little Catholic lady, really had never been to church. Someone had told her that if you go to that church, people will pray for you to be healed. So she came, and then at the end of the uh, message, we call for people to come get prayer. And she came up, and she had been in a car accident, and her back was so smashed that she could barely walk or sit. It's great pain. So we just bring her up front. I actually have one of the young men pray for her. Just pray for her. They pray for her. This lady slumps in the chair, slumps out of the chair onto the floor. And suddenly, she gets up because she's no longer in pain. Jesus showed up and totally healed her. But you know what she said? Okay, so who is this Jesus? How easy is that? But that's the heart. That's the heart of Jesus. And that's what he's put in all of us. We all carry that. How easy is that? And I think sometimes we forget what's really inside of us. I think, I think we stop in the sense of acknowledging who is inside of us, our perspective shifts. And I understand, you know, life's tough. We go through life. I'm not saying, you know, we live 100%, you know. But I do believe this. If we allow ourselves to engage in awareness of who's in us and give time to that, uh, what I mean by that, is do you guys worship at home, pray alone with yourself? What I mean by that is when you're with the Father in your quiet time, you begin to be aware that he is just not there. He's here. And you allow yourself the opportunity to begin to experience him within. You acknowledge, yes, Father, you're in me. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And then you begin to let yourself, it's almost like you're waiting with expectation to experience something. And it's that presence, it's that sense and awareness and encounter of his presence in us. Because like I said, if there's something living inside of you, you're going to know it. I mean, people with critters know it. So how much more should we know it? And, you know, and I'm not talking about working up an emotion, although I believe God gave us emotions. God is emotional. And I honestly, honestly believe emotions help us anchor into his encounter for us. So I'm not saying chase emotions, but if they come, let them come. 
I mean, how can you be in love with someone and not have emotions? That doesn't work. So it's okay. So creating the opportunity, allowing yourself to become aware again. And we know what's, we know this, we know who's in us, but we have this confident assurance in our quiet time that we have this river of living water and out of us will flow. And so we begin to focus on him. We begin to worship and, and then we allow ourselves to begin to experience his presence. Sometimes it's not five minutes. Sometimes it's 20 minutes, but I promise you, as you get alone with him and you begin to focus on him, he'll show up. He's just a good papa. And I'm not talking about going in with petitions, God, I need this. And, I, and there's a time for that. Don't get me wrong. I'm talking about the kind of of one-to-one -one time uh, with him that you're grateful and you're just thanking him for who he is. Thank you. Eye to eye. Heart to heart. And if you've never done that, it'll take practice. Because we've trained ourselves for distraction. Easy. And even in our quiet time, we can get distracted with thoughts that maybe we should, you know, oh, I got to go buy these groceries or whatever. But if you give time to it, he will show up for you. And he will encounter you just the way you need it. Because encounters can look a lot of different ways. But my heart is always just the way you need that. What is it he needs? And seriously, it's like, okay, I, I will take personal responsibility to focus in my innermost being that will flow rivers over living water. I will take responsibility to start learning the presence the feel of the presence, that encounter, but you got to do it. And you know one of the greatest things that helps that? Seriously. Is when you position yourself to simply do what Jesus did and you pray for someone, you give someone an encouraging word, whatever it is, have you noticed that the more you do that, the more you become aware of who's talking to you? The more you become aware of what's it and what he's doing? That's pretty incredible. And so, you know, it's important that we understand that, you know, when we talk about the glory, the glory is the presence of the Lord. The glory is the presence of God. The power is the presence of God being displayed. And it comes one way. And that way is through relationship. And as you know, you can't drum up your good works. You know this. But it's your relationships that allow his presence to envelop you in your relationship with him. It's extremely important. So what's the point of all this? Well, he's a good papa. He loves to be with his kids. Absolutely. Okay. But then what? Oh, I was in, I was with the father today. I was just reminding him how good he is and the wonderfulness of who he is. Da, 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 da. And I just feel so empowered, so refreshed. Great. And we should. But then what? Remember earlier I said, Jesus said, I will build my church. He's, he hasn't forgotten that part. And so we have this wonderful private time with him. We're in power. We feel refreshed. We, maybe our heart's been healed. Then we simply get to live our life, go to work, whatever it is we do, 
But suddenly, and again, it's personal responsibility to develop this, we become aware while I'm working, we're aware there's something living inside of me. We become aware that the Holy Spirit is in us. How do we know this? Because we just encountered him in the, in the secret place. Okay? We become aware. And when we dis discipline ourselves to start becoming aware of who's inside of us out in the market, out in the workplace, suddenly we have positioned ourselves for him, for Jesus to come and build his church through us. Because the whole purpose of the church is to demonstrate the heart of an incredible loving father who wants to heal the broken bodies, mend the hearts, increase uh, your provision, cause your business to go wonderful. The purpose of the church is to display the heart of the father, period. And the only way that we really can do that is learning to become aware of he is in us because we've encountered him. He's touched us. He's talked to us in our secret time with him. So when we're out at Publix or somewhere, suddenly we're aware he's in us. And suddenly you may hear, go down that aisle or see that lady. Maybe, you know, or you just get a feeling because you're aware of who's in you. And then suddenly, man, I don't know why, I just, I just, can I pray for you? And as you pray for them, it's totally up to Jesus what happens. It's not up to you. If it was up to us, we're in big trouble. It's totally up to Jesus. Our job is simply to pray. That's it. So as we pray with the awareness of who is inside of us, oh, Holy Spirit, here we go. Then let Jesus do what he can do, and that's build this church by building these people with the heart of the Father. And when enough of that happens at the grassroots level, you know what that's called? Revival. Because revival is not, as you know, revival is not a meeting. Revival, you know, revival is, a, is at the grassroots level in a community. Well, people's hearts have been encountered by a father they can't deny. That's what spurs revival. But it takes his presence to do that, that you carry. And so we just become aware in our private time and we ask, Holy Spirit, you've got to help me do this because I can't remember squat. So help me remember you're here in me. There's nothing wrong with that. Right? Jesus, help me in my unbelief. If you like wisdom, ask him. I need memory. Help me remember. Help me remember this great experience I've had with you, that you're in me. And as we live that, and we encourage each other, can I tell you a secret? We were never meant to do this alone. Now, I could camp there for a long time, but it's not where I'm going. And then suddenly, here comes the presence. Here comes an opportunity for Jesus to love on somebody through you and me. What? Yeah. It's incredible. And sometimes it's just simply getting the courage to do it. And if you're an introvert, it's a little tougher. I'm an introvert. I know. Sherry, on the other hand, is not an introvert. So she has no problems with this. And sometimes it's just simply doing what you know you should do because of what's inside of you. We were doing this uh, conference and doing training on, you know, healing, how to pray for the sick, et cetera, et cetera. And then at the end of our training, you know, we'd have prayer time. And I'll never forget this. If you're read in the Bible, 
you know, in the Gospels where it talks about when Jesus was, uh, it says that he was pressed. There were so many people around him. I remember thinking one night, oh, my goodness, I understand what this verse means. Because that's how it felt. It's, it's not me. Trust me. I know me too well. And so I'm praying for people. And be honest with you, I'm, I'm, I'm very tired. <laughs> And this guy comes up, he's a young pastor there. And he said, pastor, pastor, you've got to come pray for this guy. He's in so much pain. He's got a broken jaw. And it's, you know, it's just there. It's hanging around. And I looked at him. I said, I'm not going to pray for him. And I didn't do it nice, but I didn't do it mean. I'm not a mean person. I said, I'm not going to pray for him. You go pray for him. Well, I've never prayed for anybody to be healed before. Great. You're going to do it tonight. Listen, you know, you've been sitting in on the train, right? Go over, put your hand on it, and simply say what I, would, what I taught you. Just say that. Just say what you heard me say. Just go do it. Okay. He goes through the crowd. And I'm not kidding. Five minutes later, there's this huge eruption over that way. So I made my way over there. What's going on? I did what you said. Look, the guy's jaw snapped into place back up where it should go. And all the pain left. It was totally healed. Why? He was aware of who was inside of him, even though he's nervous. And he did it. Though he'd never done it before. I promise you from that point, in fact, those churches that we've been able, the Lord's been so gracious to us. When the Holy Spirit's allowed to do what he wants to do, when Jesus gets to walk through his people and his people, they just grow because Jesus builds the church. Yes. And a lot of times I, you know, I look at churches, situations, et cetera, et cetera, believers, da, da, da. And believe me, I do not have it all together. But my, one of my, Real plumb lines is how would Jesus really handle this situation? And I imagine Jesus being here, what would he do? Why? Because he's always after the heart. Well, you just don't know the people that maybe I don't. How many churches have you heard, churches, <laughs> where they stop people? I have a good friend back years ago. I was in college. I got in ministry when I was like 16. So it's the grace of the Lord. I was trying to do what he called me to do. And so this girl got saved. And then she went to church. And they stopped her at the door and said, I'm sorry, ma'am, you cannot come in here. He had blue jeans on. And that was years ago. I don't, that that's probably doesn't happen anymore. But think about that. If Jesus was to greet her at the door and he was looking into her heart, what would he have said? Oh, so good to see you. So if Jesus, and he's, he is, it wasn't a, Jesus didn't say, well, maybe I'll build my church. He said, I will build my church. And he obviously has. I mean, goodness gracious. And he never stops. And he builds his church by gazing into the heart of the people he, he comes in contact with and then moves from there. And see, he... This example I'm giving you is what you carry in you. You know, well, we know the scripture, uh, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. Yeah, great. Think about that. He's alive. Something in you that's living right now. And wants to flow forth like living water to people. It wasn't. And out of your innermost being will flow rivers of living water. It wasn't 
for us as much as it is for the people that need the living water. And we saw, and, and as we know in the book of Acts, the Holy Spirit came, everything changed. Jesus began to build a church. I love it. In Acts 4, the disciples were teaching, praying together, eating together. And what did it say? Get this. The Lord added daily. Jesus was building his church. That's all he wants to do. And when Jesus builds a church through us, The lonely are not lonely anymore. The wounded, the abused, get to walk out of that. Jesus builds through us. The body gets to be restored, the heart, the mind, when Jesus builds the church. Okay. Here I am, Jesus. What, okay, what would you do? Let me help help me see into the heart of this person. Because let me ask you this question. Jesus was so in love, so in love, as we know. I mean, goodness gracious, he went to the cross. What are we to do when someone comes into our life? And he puts their heart in our hands. Huh? Yeah. Divine appointments, encounters with people. He literally gives us the opportunity for him to place their heart into our hands. What are we going to do with that? Seriously, think about that. Sorry. We just simply take it and let Jesus do what only he can do. Because we know he's in us. We know who he is. He know, we know he's an incredible father. And we know he's going to heal that heart. And he's going to use you to do it. And sometimes you just need to know you've got the courage in you to do it and you just do it. Even with your knees shaking, you just do it. What if I'm wrong? Well, as I said earlier, our job is to pray. It's Jesus' job to do the rest. So what? I've been wrong. So we receive encounters. We receive this, all of this, of course, for our refreshing so that we then can lock arms with Jesus and walk with him as he builds his church because he needs you to build his church here. He needs us to allow him to build his church here. Let me have you stand up. If you would, would you just close your eyes? I just, I just want to pray for, for us. And just close your eyes, maybe even, you know, just hold your, your hands out. Wow, Jesus, look at, here we are. <laughs> We're right here. You're here with us. Right now, I mean, right in this room, Lord, here we are. This moment, this, this is the moment. And you're here. And really, Papa, we simply are asking that you would come and do what only you can do in us. And that you would come and let us begin to see and anticipate the very fact that you really, really, really are inside of us. And I ask for the grace, Father, that when we're in our quiet time, that you would just envelop us with your presence. 
Not because we need things, but we just love being with you. We just need you. That's it. I ask for the grace to envelop us. Just envelop us in that quiet time. Envelop us now. And Holy Spirit, I ask that you would just so uh, fan into flames your presence in us so that where we are, where we go, we are there. And we're ready for you to place someone's heart in our hands. I ask for your presence. I ask for your empowering presence and, and your courage to walk that out. Really, Papa, I, seriously, I really ask for all of us for a, just a gift of your empowered presence and that gift of courage, that gift of faith, just to go ahead, receive that heart. And then, oh, above all things, Jesus, let us see, let us see the heart the same way you see it. Now, hello, Lord, that may take a little work for us, but that's what we want. So Jesus just, Jesus, just thank you. Thank you. Here you are. You're here. You're here. And Jesus, we just, we love you. Where would we be without you? And Jesus, we want to lock arms with you. We really do. And we want to help you build your church. So we allow you to do it through us. Jesus, you're incredible. And Lord, let this let our encounters be encounters of your heart. Just not shaking. That's good. Just not fiery. That's all great. But Lord, help us encounter your heart. You. So, Father, we just thank you. Here we are, your kids. And more than anything, we want you. So, Jesus, I just ask that you walk amongst us and they would just touch our hearts, that you would uh, ignite our spirits again. And that we never forget what it's like to be loved by you. So Jesus, I just ask for this kind of encounter tonight. Just the way each of us needs it, whatever, whatever way that is. And Jesus, from tonight on, we just thank you for helping us to build your church. Wow. Thank you for your incredible heart. Father, I thank you that as you place people's hearts in our hands, great signs and wonders can take place. People come to know you. Really, they get to know you. That you're not some Sunday school story. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Why don't you just take a little bit and 
focus on what he's doing right now. Let, oh, become aware. Let your awareness be on what he's doing right now for you. Whatever that is. Let's just take a few mo moments. Let your awareness engulf that. You become more and more aware of it, more and more aware of his heart in you, of his presence in you. And Jesus, help us become aware, deeply aware and excited and joyous about this. So let's, let's just take a few minutes and I, I want to encourage you just to sir, focus as an act of your will, become aware of what he's doing, his presence, his river, that there's someone alive in you, living inside. Let's just take a few minutes. Let him do what only he can do. You know, Jesus, even, you know, as we go home and go to bed, we'd love for, we invite you to come and visit with us in our dreams as well. Thank you, Father. Thank the hearts, the hearts you bring to us.